Welcome to It's Getting Better All the Time Mental Health Outreach with your host, Sister Ayla Gray, providing information and support while encouraging hope and faith. You can find out more about us by logging on to our website at igbattmho.org. Again, igbattmho.org. You can email us at igbatt1 at aol.com or support at igbattmho.org. But again, it's just easier to go to our website, igbattmho.org, to email us, to leave a question, a message, to get more information. Okay, so again, we want today we want to talk about living with a chronic illness. Living with a chronic illness and chronic physical illness and mental health. And we're going to talk about kind of two of those topics. I think number one, um, it's important for everyone to know that individuals living with a serious and persistent mental illness tend to die earlier than the general population. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there. And there are a lot of factors for that, but um, they do. The second thing, chronic illnesses such as cancer, and I'm going to be reading this from the National Institute of Mental Health.nih.gov. I'm going to read it and then we'll talk about it as we go. <coughs> um, chronic illness and mental health, recognizing and treating depression. Chronic illnesses such as cancer, heart disease, or diabetes may make you more likely to have or develop a mental health condition. It's not with everybody, but it's just saying that it may make you, you know, you may become more likely. It is, it is common to feel sad or discouraged after having a heart attack, receiving a cancer diagnosis, or when trying to manage a chronic condition such as pain. You may be facing new limits on what you can do and may feel stressed or concerned about treatment outcomes in the future. It may be hard to adapt to a new reality and to cope with the changes in ongoing treatment that come with the diagnosis, favorite activities. Right? Let me stop there. It says it's not, it's, it is common to feel sad or discouraged after having a heart attack, receiving a cancer diagnosis, or when trying to manage a chronic condition such as pain. I want to insert another sentence in here. It is common to feel sad or discouraged after receiving a mental health diagnosis, after being you know, told that, you may be di that you're diagnosed with depression or diagnosed with anxiety, diagnosed with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder, right? It's not uncommon to feel, you know, on one hand there's a relief because you know, okay, you now have a diagnosis for some people or now I know what's really going on. And then for other people, the more you think about it, it brings in a sense of, it can a sense of sadness. It can bring in depression on top of it. It can bring in questions about why. Why did this happen to me? How did we get here? What did I do wrong? Um, could I have uh, done something differently? It brings in a lot of, lot of questions. Now when you talk about getting a cancer diagnosis or a, um, having a heart attack, you know, you think about, wow, I could have almost died. I, uh, or I could have almost died or I could die. You know, so, but when you talk about mental illnesses, you think about your life flashes before your eyes sometimes, but in a different way. Because you think about, let's say, a case where you have a family member and you get this diagnosis for your child. You start worrying, you start thinking about what can this child do? How is this child's life going to be different? Or if it's your, you, you getting the diagnosis, let's say as a younger person, like in your 20s or so, you may be wondering, you know, wow, can I go to school? Will I be able to have children? Will I be like the people on the street? You start having a lot of different um, emotions and you have a lot of different questions. So having a chronic illness, whether it's a quote unquote physical illness, which can bring about depression or sadness, even having a diagnosis, getting a mental health diagnosis or having a mental health illness can also bring about those feelings of sadness, can bring about feelings of depression because you just have a lot of questions. You start wondering, as I said, you know, what's going on with me? What's next? You're going to have a lot of questions. The thing is, is that whether we're talking about a physical, a chronic physical illness or a chronic mental illness, <coughs> um, the word or the name of the, the, the game is going to be change and acceptance, right? There's going to be a change. First of all, um, if you find yourself having feeling sad about it, temporary feelings of sadness are normal, 
Um, if you find yourself becoming really depressed, you may need to really talk to someone about that depression. But when you're having, a, whenever you have a chronic illness, you get a diagnosis of a chronic illness, the sadness, depression, a lot of thoughts go through your mind. You have a lot of questions. But the name of the game or the name is going to be about change because your life has changed. What way, to what degree will, you know, we don't really know yet because you just got the diagnosis. It depends on the individual, but it will change. The thing is that you want to know, you may, you may find that there are some things you may have to cut down on. There are some things that you may not be able to do. You know, you may not be able to go to the gym as much as you used to, right? Um, you may not be able to, um, you know, eat certain types of foods. You may not be able to go back to work, or if you go back to work, is that modified um you know, modified duty. You know, you may be a person that used to like putting things together and used to like fixing things, but now that you had problems with your hands, you can't do that anymore, right? You may be a person, like I said, who used to like to run marathons. Now you, you, you find yourself that may be limited, okay? You may be a person, you know, who used to love doing math problems, but now because of your depression, because of your, you know, the auditory hallucinations, you may find yourself, you know, being sidetracked or distracted. Right? So chronic illnesses brings in a change. I think it's important to know that, number one, you want to get as much information as you can about the illness that you have, about the, um, the options that you have out there, the, um, the outcomes, the strategies, etc. And then you want to kind of give yourself an opportunity to grieve because you are going to grieve because it's a loss. It's a loss of you know, your ability, you know, you lost a bit, some people can't drive anymore, you can't work anymore, you can't do certain things, right? So you, you start thinking about all those things and there is a sadness. But when you also want to get to the point where you begin to accept what, what those limitations are. So you want to accept the limitations, but when, accept, when I'm talking about accepting <coughs> the limitations, we're not talking about accepting in a sense of just accepting and giving up. What we're doing is that we're accepting that yes, my life has changed, or that my life is changing. Then, but I'm realizing that on the other side of that acceptance, there is an opportunity for me to have like a new life, to do things differently now. No, I will not be able to maybe run a marathon like I used to, but I may be able to walk a marathon, I may be able to bike, I may be able to use crutches, right? I may not be able to um, go to school there's, you know, in four years. It may take me eight years. You know, so again, acceptance is just realizing that, you know, it's not saying that I'm giving up. It's just realize that I may have to get to where I want to be a little slower. You know, having kids and being a single parent is not the end of the world. It just means some things may have to be put on hold. You may have to um, shuffle things around. But it doesn't mean that you can't get to where you want to be, to your, to your particular goal, right? Um, but when we are faced with a chronic illness, whether it's uh, mental or physical, there, we have to, there's a tendency just to, to, to feel like things that our life is over. First of all, it's natural to feel that way, right? It's just because it's a loss, it's a shock, right? We go through, in order to get to the acceptance, there are certain phases that we have to go through. We go through that anger phase. We go through that phase, well, this can't be me. I don't believe this. We go through the phase where, you know, we, you know, we may get depressed, we may get sad. That's okay. Going through those phases is fine. It's just that at some point, we want to get to the realization that I'm still here, I'm here for a reason, that there, my life is value. There's value in my life because I'm still here. And now, now what? What can I do now? How can I make things differently? Or how can I live with this particular illness? And this is just a couple of things that I wanted to read off. And you want to think about making some changes, right? Um, okay, what do I do, need to do now? When we talk about severe persistent mental illnesses or mental illnesses in general, one of the triggers we know is stress. So what's stressful to you is not stressful to me and vice versa. You will have to determine what's stressful for you, right? But again, whenever you make that determination, you want to begin to manage that particular stress. You may have to manage it. You may have to manage your, how you work, right? You may be only able to work a few hours. You may have to manage what you eat or, or when you eat. 
you may have to manage your medications, right? Um, instead of taking one pill, you may have to take five. Instead of taking them in the morning, you may have to take it at night with food. So again, it's about making some lifestyle changes. It's about learning what the boundaries are and setting limits, right? It's, it's about challenging those thoughts that come to your mind that say, you, you know, um, it's over for you. You know, any thought that make you feel discouraged, okay? Any thought that makes you feel, you know, um, oh, I'll never see this. I'll never see, you know, I'll never have a kid. I'll never get married. My kids will never, I'll never get a chance to see my kids live. I'll ne I mean, um, get older. I'll never get a chance to fill in the blank. You know, whatever it is, you start thinking about all these things that you'll never do. And again, it's understandable, it's part of the process, but at some point, whether we, it takes us a, a few months to get to acceptance, it takes us a few weeks, or it takes us a few years, <clears throat> at some point, we have to get to that phase where we begin to, okay, this is what's going on with me. I'm diagnosed with schizophrenia. I know about all the things that I can't do, but what can I do, right? Yes, I'm living with HIV. I'm living, I got, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with cancer, okay? I'm dealing, I just had a heart attack. These are all the things the doctor is saying that I can't do. These are all the things that, um, the problems that I'm having. But what can I do, right? We want to begin to focus on the things that I can do. How, or how can I do the things that I used to do, but in a different way? How can I get joy out of my life? Because for us, sometimes we can spend so much time focusing on what should be. I should not have this diagnosis. I should not be living with HIV. I should not have cancer. I should not have had the heart attack. You know, this is not fair. You know, I don't smoke or drink. I'm a vet, I'm a vegan, right? And I am only 100 pounds, right? Why did I have a heart attack? And I have somebody else who like 500 pounds and they're healthy. They never had a heart attack. You know, we start getting into comparing, like what did I do wrong? You know, all of those things, a part of the process, but at some point we get to the point where we realize, okay, I've been sitting here long enough. I've been, you know, rehearsing, playing back things over in my mind long enough. What could I have done? Why this happened to me? Now I have to realize that I'm still here and I have to begin to live. And I'm going to live by getting as much education, as much information as I can about my diagnosis. I'm going to live by talking to other people who have the same illness, the same diagnosis, and figure out how they're managing. Because if they're managing, I should be able to manage. They can give me some tips, some strategies. I'm going to set boundaries for myself. I'm going to press my limits, push the limits, and see what I can and what I can't do. I'm not going to focus on you know, uh, what I can't do. I'm going to challenge those, any thoughts that make me feel down or discouraged. You know, when I get a discouraged thought, or when a thought tells me that I'm not going to make it, I'm going to tell myself, no, I can't make it. No, I may have some days when I'm slower. I have some days when I have to take a break, but I am going to make it. So living well with a chronic condition boils down to acceptance, right? And acceptance is not giving up. Acceptance is just realizing that, okay, I have to build a life now from where I am. I have to start from where I am now. I'm diagnosed with um, HIV. What's next? How can I live well with HIV? I have to take my medications. I have to eat right. I have to take care of my health. I have to manage my stress. Whatever it is that you have to do, you want to do that. So again, living well with a chronic illness is about acceptance. Okay? It's not just, it, but before we get there, it's about education, getting information, talking to people, you know, allowing yourself to grieve, allowing yourself to feel sad, to be depressed for a, pe a period of time because again, that's part of the process, but it's about realizing I'm here for a reason. I'm still alive, I'm here for a reason. I'm not gonna just give in. I'm just not gonna, you know, um, slip into depression to such an extent that I never get out. I'm gonna do something with my life. I'm gonna live my life to the fullest, to the best of my ability in the midst of my illness, whether it's I'm hearing voices, whether it's depression, whether it's anxiety, whether it's cancer or depression, because I'm still here and I'm here for a reason. This has been It's Getting Better All the Time Mental Health Outreach, providing information and support while encouraging hope and faith. Log on to our website at igbattmho.org. Have a great day.